welcome to today's uh, lesson discussion. Our Sabbath lessons discussion is uh, titled An Exciting Way to Get Involved. Before we pray together and then we'll uh, share through the uh, texts, uh, we will uh, first introduce our panelists for the day. Next to me is our brother Weekly Posire. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Be blessed. We also have our sister Gladys Kerosi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much. Welcome. Last week we looked at uh, a topic developing a winning attitude. Developing a winning attitude. And uh, we learned quite a lot on how we can work out our skills, we can work out together as a team to be able to evangelize well. So we focused on the techniques of uh, evangelism. Today we are going to focus on how we can work together to be able to be involved in uh, God's work and also to be excited as we do it. Actually, uh, our key text is coming from uh, the book of uh, Matthew 29, Matthew 37, and uh, Matthew 9, 37, and 38. I'll read from uh, New King James Version, which says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers in the field. As we get into this text and more other texts, we get the understanding that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us that it is time when the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers at the moment are few. But the most interesting part is that we don't go calling for the laborers, but we are being told, let us pray that the Lord of the harvest sends out laborers into the harvest. So we only need to pray and the Lord uh, shall uh, avail his people. We understand that uh, every time when we are many, uh, even in our society, there is a lot of power in numbers. And uh, we get excited when we work together with the, the majority. And uh, we realize that uh, even in our own personal life, we would like to work as a group. We are a social being. And uh, even in spiritual matters, we cannot divorce our social part. We do better uh, when we have social support system. This system and our methods will uh, strengthen our faith, increase our knowledge of uh, understanding of scripture. Even in prayer, we also have to depend on one another. And that is why there are times we sing that I need the prayers of my friends. And uh, today uh, we are going to focus on the biblical basis for small groups. And uh, we will discover the exciting ways to be involved. And uh, I want now to uh, bring on board my uh, friends and my panelists to take us through the first group that uh, worked together through creation, how it was formed, how it was organized, and how they were focused on their purpose. Uh, weekly, please take us through. Um, thank you, Elder. Now, um, on Sunday we talk about God's idea first. And uh, I think in the Bible, the first 
you know, people mistake the first group as, uh, the first small group as Adam and Eve and the children. But if you look at uh, the book of Genesis chapter 1, in verse 26, it talks about, let us make man in our own, in our own image. Let us, let us uh, represent that there exists a group that was involved in the creation of, of man. And this group that, uh, that God mentions when he says, let us, uh, let us make man, we refer it commonly as the Trinity. That is the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And um, if uh, we can actually go back to the beginning, we can then say that the first group that we know is actually the Holy, the Holy Trinity. And this is why the topic of today is God's idea first. Now, now uh, the, thing, the thing about the group here is that they might have different tasks, but they work in, uh, the, the writer says, indivisible union. Indivisible, which means that, uh, as the writer continues to say, that God, uh, God the Father was a master designer, the great architect, and he carried out his plans through Jesus. Jesus was actually the person who was uh, overlooking, yani he was overlooking the whole process of, of creation. And then the power of the Holy Spirit is the only to the active agent in the creation story. And we can also see, uh, even after the resurrection of Jesus, of how the power is played, and how uh, Jesus talked about sending a helper to the, to the disciples, which means that even though they had different tasks, they all worked in one union. And this is the same case that we talk about. And therefore, this analogy, we can, we can say that this was the first small group in salvation history. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Weekly. We realize that this first group uh, gave us a model of how we can work in, uh, in a group and having God's idea. That um, where there is God's idea, there is a certain model, and, and the model has to be the identification of the group and the purpose. And uh, as uh, my brother Wycliffe has said, that uh, for us to achieve that purpose, each individual in that group will work distinctly, but uh, for the purpose of achieving the whole purpose of the group. And it is also important that we realize that this first group worked very well in creation and also in the process of our redemption. We want to get into some other biblical examples of uh, the model of working as a group and at this point I'll bring in our sister Gladys uh, to take her through how small groups worked in scripture. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we are told that uh, the small groups begun by God as a model uh, goes on until now. So in scriptures we are encouraged that small groups come together uh, to form fellowship, to form uh, prayer bands or praying together. They encourage one another. They labor together for uh, souls or for Christ. And in this case then we all get opportunity to come together as a people of God and share the responsibilities that are given to the church of God and be able to utilize the gifts that are bestowed upon us effectively. Uh, we have an example where this model was uh, uh, effective in the Old Testament, that is in Exodus 18, uh, verse 21 to 25, we have this story of uh, uh, Moses and his father-in-law. We are told that Moses had a task in uh, in organizing people and handling all the issues that people faced as uh, they journeyed through the desert. And then when he meets his father-in-law Jethro, he advises him that if he could come up with strong and uh, able men, religious and uh, active, and use them in smaller groups. And actually, the Bible quotes that uh, or tell, uh, says that Jethro asked Moses to have these people leading people in uh, terms of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and even tens. And when Moses did this, we are told that this 
method or model worked very well for everyone and uh, we get a lot of uh, advantage or lessons that the, the work became so uh, efficient and people were able to reach one another, the leaders were able to reach one another's needs very, very easily and very effectively. And this encouraged, uh, or this helped in uh, reducing the problems that they were facing and therefore spiritual nurture was uh, 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 realized. Then we are told that this also provided opportunities for these people to come together and care for each other. So there was warm fellowship, spiritual growth, and problems were easily worked upon. And so this encouragement is also seen all through the Bible. We find Jesus, as it has been mentioned, that he worked with the 12. And so there's an encouragement that we can work with 6 to 12. And when Jesus, uh, Jesus is choosing his disciples, he chooses the 12 from among a big group. And he works with this small group, of course together with the others, but working with this small group. And we are told that the main purpose, as Elda said, these small groups, when they come together, they must have what? A reason or a purpose, just in the model that we are given uh, through uh, Moses. And uh, in this case, Christ chooses them and sends them out. Number one, agenda to go and preach the gospel and also heal people, casting out evil spirits or demons and thus releasing people and encouraging these people to come together. And mainly why we realize that in this then, our gifts, when we come together in small groups, our gifts, our talents are utilized and uh, we effectively serve in various capacities. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so much interested with uh, the book of Exodus 18, 21 to 25 about uh, the advice that uh, Jethro gives uh, Moses. He tells him that you will tire yourself and you will tire these people. In other words, if you do it alone, eventually you will get tired. And the people who, whom you are serving will also get tired. So such a system will not be effective. However much you know everything, there is power in delegating and uh, growing other people to also serve. Uh, my brother Wycliffe uh, will now come in at this point and uh, take her through how do we organize these groups? It's not good to just put people there, tasks. It is also good for these tasks to be organized to have the objective of the whole. So, uh, weekly, uh, kindly take her through. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elder. Now, I'm organized for service. And and in this, in this sector, we, we see how Paul, from the book of 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 12 all the way to 25, and he gives us an analogy of how the human uh, body uh, goes, uh, they work hand in hand, the different complex body organs work hand in hand so that you can be fit, so that you can be healthy, and so that you can do whatever you want to do. And for example, now we, we, uh, we bring anatomy and uh, from a small biology knowledge that I have, uh, we studied about the circulatory system, the digestive system, the central nervous system. All these systems work together so that you can relate and your body can, can feel, can feel, can, uh, you can digest food, you can do all these things so that for the purpose that you be healthy and that you keep uh, your body running. When we have uh, different spiritual gifts in the church and they work differently, they work towards a common purpose which is spreading the, the gospel. For example, when you have a crusade, uh, let's say a crusade uh, in a marketplace and people, and you want to draw people to, to God. Uh, some people will come and say that the, the preaching of today is what drew me to be baptized. The, the, the song service is what brought me to be baptized. So those different spiritual gifts are the ones which are being used so that they can bring people to God. And 
and as much as they might operate differently as, they might, as much as they might not use the same mechanism they are all working towards the same purpose now they function best when organized in systems or in or in groups such that when they work alone yes they will have little or no effect but when we work together they bring up a powerful message thank you okay thank you very much uh, brother wickliff that analogy of uh, working as a body working as a system is uh, an analogy that uh, it has been employed by most organizations and they have succeeded Let's now get an example from our early church, that is the New Testament church. Uh, how the small groups propelled this church to a lot of success within a very, very short time. Sister Gladys, uh, I welcome you to uh, take her through that. And also uh, focus on the dynamics of uh, small groups, both in the early church and even in our present setting. Okay, thank you for the part that has been handled about uh, the body. You are told that the body is one with many members. And in uh, Jesus Christ, we are all born by the Spirit and baptized into one body. That is the body of Jesus Christ. And uh, as we progress now, the New Testament are small groups that uh, have worked. We find a lot of... Uh, uh, insight into through Paul's uh, experience that uh, Paul worked with the people effectively and he, a lot has been written about his uh, journeys or the, 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 from going from one place to another and uh, his nature being that whenever he went to a place he made disciples and most of the disciples that he made he attracted, them, he attracted them into the ministry and therefore they went ahead. And when we look at the books that have been given here, Acts 18, uh, 1 to 5 and Acts 21 to 4, uh, the writer of this, uh, being Luke, has mentioned quite a number of people who work together with, the, with the Paul most of them being his converts, like the young man Timothy and others. And so we realize that in this way, it, a person working together, or when we work together with our fellow uh, believers, we get encouraged, we get energized, we get that warmth. And so Paul realized that this is a very effective way, and so they went together. So we find that uh, the comment here is, says that each one of these people surely had gifts that were different from those that others possessed, uh, as well as weaknesses. I also want to add that, that when we come together, we have both the, our strengths and weaknesses. Like Paul, there are places he had very, very minor things as uh, bringing out his weaknesses. And you realize that his fellow brothers or brethren, as they went across or along could help him uh, reason through. So here we are told that each one of us possesses a gift and we put this together and achieve more. We have uh, lessons, other lessons from Acts 16, 11 to 15 and all the verses that have been given here that uh, when they had uh, uh, they, they came into contact with a lady here called Lydia and after uh, this lady receiving conversion, she invites these uh, apostles to, his, to her house, spe uh, specifically Paul. And the question here is asking, why is it necessary that she invites us, her to the home? Another one that is given in Acts 12, 11 and uh, 12, but being a story in that chapter after uh, Peter has been released from prison through the angel taking him through, you know, God sends an angel and Peter is released and taken all the way and when he realizes what has happened, the next place he remembers to go to was a home. So 
basically what I'm trying to bring about is that mostly these early believers met in homes, in small groups, where they were able to give each other warmth, go through the lessons and the teachings, prepare, preparing for the next course of action. So he, he went to a home of a fellow believer, as well as the example we've seen before of Paul. So why are homes necessary or important to help us form small groups for us to be able to uh, uh, minister to others? I want to believe that from homes we will minister to each other and then gain the experience and approach a neighbor, a friend here and there and then we can come together in small groups and be able to do service. This has worked in other places very well and uh, has achieved a lot. We are also told that small groups uh, become a dynamic or dynamics in spreading the gospel. Uh, I want to bring in small groups in our church currently that can work together and uh, involve members because small groups are also targeted, targeted to involve the membership. You look at the structure of our church, we realize that we have a group for the children, targeting children. We have the youth ministries that target youths. We have the AMO and we have the women ministries. I think I like the way or the system that the church came up with because each one of, her, of, of our interests are able to be uh, uh, taken care of in our small groups. Besides that, our church works very well in uh, organizations called prayer cells, which we have had before in this church and we know how they, they work. But then you realize that at the moment mostly uh, these small groups are not working very well. So there is an encouragement that uh, these small groups are a dynamic. It, they are power in itself. Because when we come together as small groups with the same interest, we keep each other warm. That fellowship and warmth uh, really propels each one of us to go forward and be able to reach not only ourselves or our needs, but also we can extend that to a neighbor, to a friend, or even to a weak brethren in that, or brother in that small group. Pick, for example, the children. They, when they come together with that love and genuineness and honesty, uh, they attract each other easily. They pull each other together and we can realize, the church can realize a lot of harvest. So we are told that when Jesus is talking to his uh, disciples in Matthew 9, 37 to 38, he brings in the element of the harvest being plenteous and the laborers being few. Unfortunately, the harvest is too large, but the laborers are too few. But Christ gives a solution to this, that for this then we need the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so we are encouraged to pray together for the Lord of the harvest to send out who? Laborers into his harvest. And by so doing, this will encourage small groups being formed in the church, which will come out or whose main focus will be witnessing, serving, and also nurturing our own self or our faith so that we may be able to equip ourselves as witnesses of Christ. And so we are encouraged that as a people, can we start thinking about forming small groups around our area of influence. We can get a brother, a sister, two people come together and influence each other in the study, in fellowship, in praying together and we shall become effective witnesses of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. I don't know whether Wycliffe would like to add something on uh, the present uh, day uh, formation of groups, uh, probably using the technology that uh, we are exposed to. But let me just summarize by a testimony from a church in Europe that uh, was not doing well and uh, they employed the small groups 
Uh, we are told that uh, about 17 members gave into that call and they started small groups in their houses and within a very short time the church was really, really growing. That's a testimony that small groups work. And uh, I will welcome uh, my brother to say what or two and then uh, he will uh, lead us in our closing prayer. Okay, to add on, uh, on how the small groups can be effective during this time and during this time of technology. Um, uh, these small groups like uh, WhatsApp groups and uh, maybe Zoom meetings, they can actually be effective in, in, uh, in involving members to participate in, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, service. And in the same way that, that, uh, that the small groups that you're talking about, we, you know, we, we go with technology, we go with how it flows. We, we don't get left behind because you say, now we won't follow it because maybe for our own personal reasons. The small groups, even in tech, are very important in the enabling of the, of the spreading of the gospel. And with that, uh, let me welcome you there. Amen. You can lead us in our closing prayer. Okay. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you during this time. We thank you and give, we give you praise, O oh Father, for this wonderful morning that we've had to discuss the beautiful words. And let us, uh, may you encourage the members to be more involved even as they showcase their spiritual gifts so that your name may be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.